Good Monday evening. Hope you and yours had a good weekend. And uh, hopefully all the dads and grandpas and uncles out there had a, a good day yesterday. The weather certainly cooperated for the holiday weekend with uh, sunshine, cooler temperatures, much cooler temperatures, but overall very, very comfortable. In fact, uh, we tied a record low yesterday morning at the Youngstown Warren Airport. It got down to 44 degrees. Before we get to this week's weather, this week is National Lightning Safety Awareness Week kind of a separate week from Severe Weather Awareness Week, which was earlier in the uh, spring season. This uh, week just focuses on lightning, so I just wanted to briefly touch on some lightning facts and figures this evening when we talk about fatalities from lightning. You know, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And you look at this list, and the majority of these have to do with activities that are on the water or near the water. Fishing, at the beach, boating. Uh, those are towards the top of the list. And so whether you're at the beach or on the lake or playing golf or doing anything outdoors as we uh, go through the spring and summer seasons especially, you have to be aware of how close storms are. Make sure you can track them on the Storm Tracker 21 app uh, on the interactive radar. But uh, also, if you can hear thunder, even though it might seem like it's a distant storm, if you can hear thunder, that means you're close enough to the storm that you could be struck by lightning. Sometimes bolts of lightning stray far out from the anvil cloud of a thunderstorm and and strike the ground pretty far away from the, the center of the storm. So yeah, if you can hear the thunder, even though it might seem kind of distance, uh, distant, that is, that's your clue that it's time to get off the lake, time to get off the beach, time to get off the golf course as well. Not surprisingly, with some of the activities on this list, uh, the majority, by a fair number, by, by a fair margin, I should say, of uh, lightning fatalities are men as opposed to women. You know, a lot of these activities are more male centric such as construction and even golf and things like that um so that's not a huge surprise but yeah especially especially the guys out there you tend to be out and about a little more often at this time of the year in places that are particularly susceptible to problems with lightning all right as we move ahead towards this uh, final stretch of the spring season astronomical spring of course ends tomorrow morning we'll talk about the details on that in a moment as summer gets underway in the northern hemisphere the last few days of spring have been kind of cool 69 degrees saturday 72 yesterday and the clouds kept uh, temperatures in the lower 70s this afternoon for the month so far when you factor in the highs and the lows 1.1 degrees above average and while we're looking at the calendar views uh, for the month, precipitation-wise at the airport, just a little bit of a deficit here. Uh, the second half of the month does look pretty dry. I think we're going to add a lot more days with uh, zeros next to them over the next uh, 10 days. Not every day will be completely dry, but overall pretty dry-looking pattern. Now, it is not warm for mid-June out there this evening, but the dew points are coming up. Those dew points, along with the temperatures this weekend, the dew points were impressive. They were impressively low, uh, spending a lot of time in the 30s for dew points on uh, on Sunday. Dew points are starting to creep up and uh, that's the first sign that a warm front is pushing through and uh, the second sign of course will be the building heat. Already the heat is building across the upper Midwest. Heat, uh, excessive heat warnings out for the Twin Cities this evening up towards Fargo along the Red River. Heat advisories out for other parts of the upper Midwest this evening. Temperatures are pretty impressive. Uh, you know you go out into Minnesota 101 in Minneapolis as of this recording. 94 in Chicago. In the meantime, we are still in the lower 70s here locally. Now, we've had the clouds today. We've had a, occasionally a shower or a sprinkle, and there's actually just a tiny area of low pressure you can kind of pick out over Lake Erie this evening. A little spin on the radar here. Uh, once this clears the area later on tonight, uh, we'll be clear from any precipitation, but I can't rule out a sprinkle or a shower here and there over the next handful of hours then the sky will clear as i mentioned uh, spring is about to give way to summer astronomically speaking in the northern hemisphere of course chances are if you're watching this video you know meteorologists uh, prefer meteorological and climatological seasons that always begin and end on the same days uh, june 1st was the beginning of meteorological summer but astronomical seasons can vary just a little bit um and uh, in the northern hemisphere tomorrow summer begins at 5 14 a.m eastern Locally, 5.50 a.m. sunrise, 8.58 p.m. sunset. It's our longest day of the year. Now, the sunrises are already getting just a little bit uh, later in the morning. I mean, by seconds. But we still have a little time to gain at the end of the day. The sunset won't reach its latest time until about a week or so from right now. But overall daylight uh, from sunrise to sunset, of course, peaks 
on June 21st, the summer solstice tomorrow. An intense sunshine for the afternoon. What a change. I mean, it was, you know, jacket weather for some today and over the last couple of days, but uh, air conditioners will be working overtime tomorrow afternoon. And then a cold front will head our way. Now, the heat and the humidity will build again on Wednesday. I think we'll notice especially the dew points on Wednesday. They'll be a little bit elevated tomorrow, but we'll spend more time in the middle and upper 60s for those dew points on Wednesday. In the meantime, a cold front heads our way, and I think there will be a scattering of storms that try to get going second half of the day. Uh, at this stage of the game, the models are not in great agreement on the highest concentration of these, but my gut feeling is that the highest number of storms will probably be in the southern part of our viewing area and down towards I-70. So say between route route to 30, Lisbon area, down towards Interstate 70, down to Cambridge and Wheeling and over towards Pittsburgh. That's what my gut is telling me at this point. But for the for the time being, we're going to you know kind of sound the alarm that anyone can have a shower or a storm before Wednesday afternoon is through. We'll have a better sense as to the, uh, the chances. Uh, from north to south as we go into tomorrow and then high pressure builds in on thursday good looking day with lower dew points spc the storm prediction center did outline most of the region in the low end one on a one to five scale risk for severe weather wednesday afternoon uh, my suspicion is depending on what the models do this evening uh, you'll you'll see some of this area moved off to the south maybe they even introduce a slight risk somewhere probably s towards i-70 for day two uh, if we were to get a gusty storm Wednesday afternoon, a hail producer could uh, could occur. Um, we could have a, a brief gust of wind, but overall the wind shear in the atmosphere is not particularly impressive on Wednesday. So organized severe weather does not seem all that likely. I, don't, I doubt we'll have as many big beefy storms as we did across the area during the middle of last week. I think that was what on Wednesday. In the meantime, uh, not much of a difference between the temperature and the heat index tomorrow because the dew points won't be especially high. But as the dew points come up into the mid-60s on Wednesday, the temperature will be in the lower 90s. The heat index may approach 100 before any uh, spotty storms get going. Then we'll get a couple of real comfortable days, Thursday and Friday, before some heat tries to build back in in time for the weekend. But this is not a particularly wet-looking pattern for the next week. Chance of a spotty storm Wednesday, maybe we get a spotty storm on Sunday, but... Other than that, boy, not a lot in the way of wet weather. All of our models here are showing under an inch worth of rain as a region-wide average over the next seven days. Now, if you were to get a thunderstorm tomorrow and maybe another one on Sunday, could you see more than this? Absolutely. But as a region-wide average, uh, the pickings will be kind of slim, it looks like, over the next week. Some yards are getting a little bit brown across the area. We had plentiful rain in most of the spring and earlier on this month, but it's been a little bit drier of late depending on where you are. Um, and with this pretty dry pattern over the next week or so, um, we may see an increase in the uh, you know, kind of brownness of the landscape across the region during the latter third of June and the first part of July as well. That'll do it for uh, me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Monday evening. I will see you back here same time, same place on Tuesday.